Dewsbury, in the heart of West Yorkshire. A hundred years ago, the invention of the steam engine powered this town into the Industrial Revolution. There were literally hundreds of mills. Their chimney stacks dominated the skyline. Hundreds of thousands of yards of cloth were produced here and shipped all over the world. We're steeped in reminders of our industrial heritage. The most fascinating reminder, though, must surely be the big machines themselves. But out of the hundreds of big mill engines in existence here at the turn of the century, only one remains, the Sarah. A beautiful tandem mill engine made locally by W and J Cardwell. She's now the sole survivor of her maker. She was installed at Providence Mills in 1883. A year later, she was converted from a single cylinder engine and made into a tandem compound capable under full steam of generating 300 horsepower, still powerful by today's standards. But they had to be. This one engine would have powered the whole mill, working any number of machines. The ceiling of the mill was covered by an intricate system of cogs, drive shafts and pulleys, all connected to the huge 12-ton flywheel. Sarah's working life ended in 1960, but her story started again in 1981, when Scopos Design bought Providence Mills. For they discovered the Sarah, derelict and decay, locked up in what remained of the engine room. It was only the dedication of two enthusiastic volunteers, Paul Ackrig and Chris Evans, who, along with the blessing of Scopos's managing director, Stephen Batty, began the painstaking task of bringing her back to life. A labour of love, Chris Evans. I joined a steam society in the early part of 1985 and I wondered where, nearest to my home, was a steam engine I could go and look at. And it came in the shape of Scopos Design in Dewsbury, where there was known to be a derelict engine, namely Sarah. I came during April 1985 to see the engine and met Mr John Day, who was then the engineering director, and he showed me the engine and also told me that they were intending to spend some money on it and restore it. Now, five years later, she's complete. I'm proud of what I've achieved with the backing of Scopos. Um, I'm proud because we've actually succeeded in saving a unique part of our industrial heritage. I'm proud also that Scopos have deemed it needed doing. From a boy, or rather from boyhood, I always wanted to be involved with a steam engine, but never thought it would come in a package as huge as this one. But it's always been in my blood, I think, from, you know, when I was a kid. Um, and then suddenly it appeared. You know, I just love steam engines. And, and to see people's faces when they come up here on open days and their reaction to seeing Sarah running, it makes it all worthwhile. It's beautiful. Chris, Paul and Skopos are very proud of Sarah, and understandably, for she's a wonderful example of an important part of our industrial heritage, providing us with a fascinating insight and, along with the other attractions at Scopos's steam days, a great day out. is still used to some extent in the modern manufacturing process. The raw cotton is extensively washed, steamed and pressed, but it has to be perfect to be ready to be printed on. When printing is complete, the colours on the cloth need to be fixed. This is done by this large machine at the end of the print run. High pressure jets of steam dry the inks and fix the cloth, ready for the next part of the process. 
These automated machines, together with their operators and overseers, produce some wonderful cloths. But, I don't know, somehow it just doesn't have the romance of the great steam engines.